Pop the cat, my cat, or if I'm his, has been on summer holiday at my mom's place. And he's quite the character. So there's a long story about Pop the cat and his adventures in Babystrand uh, and the little Ica shop there, the little grocery shop. But there's also books. Because me and Mandel cannot meet up without talking about books. And then there's cooking lessons. Mandel, when he goes away, always takes cooking classes. But he never cooks what he learns at home. Because he's not into cooking. He says, I'm going, oh, that's so interesting. But I can understand why he wants to take the cooking classes. Because I can see how that is a very mm, savory way into a country, its culture, its flavors, its taste, its tastes, um, which I think me and Reddy actually touched upon in one of our final conversations as well. But you have fun with us, I hope, and at the end, we are speaking quite a lot about the Akimba workshops, which um, uh, towards the end of September are starting their final rounds of all of the different workshops that they run. And then they won't have those anymore. Uh, they will only continue with the Alt MBA. And I've taken two of those workshops. I've taken the Creative Workshop and I've taken the Story Skills Workshop. And I highly recommend both of them. And Mandel has taken a few more. So if you're interested in that, go check them out. Um, it's good value. It's good stuff. You will learn a lot and you will get to meet some fantastic people. So uh, I'm definitely rooting for you to, to check that out if you haven't. Hi, Mandel. Helena, how are you? I am good. I am it is warm, even though it's actually <laughs> five, six, seven degrees colder today than it's been uh, earlier in the week. Um, but it is good. I've been, I was on vacation last week and then I thought, hmm, one week's vacation is a little bit too little. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to try to do a half vacation this week, but I have failed miserably. Um, but I'm still good, though. I'm yeah, still I, good. I can see the suntan. Yep, there's been a little bit of sun for the last two weeks, which has been good because I was so pale before and I enjoy, you know, Vitamin D is a vital ingredient, especially for us northerners here, where in the winter time, you know, you just cannot get enough sun uh, because it's too cold. Um, so even if you're outside, you only get sun in your face, kind of, and that that doesn't do the trick. So. And is uh is two weeks the the normal time you go on vacation? No. What is what is normal for you? Well, for me, it kind of varies. For Sweden, I would say that it's something between three and six weeks. Wow! You you get most people being full time employed, you get five or even six weeks vacation. You don't have to take it all at once. Mm -hmm. um, but a month in the summer, it, that's what you do. At one time? At one time, yeah. Mm, because that's the, you know, it almost takes a week to just let go of the tempo, <laughs> the energy, the to-do list, the, you know. So it takes one week to kind of slow mm -hmm. down. And then you need to stay there in that kind of chill, chill place for a while to really, uh, you know, charge your batteries and everything. And then... You're back on again. But mm. the U.S. Is, is definitely not like Sweden. Yeah, it's much different. And yeah. not only with, the, uh, with companies, because uh, my company, I get, 
I get five or six weeks as well. But just the mindset of how we vacation or as uh, you might call it holiday, <laughs> which I always laugh at whenever I hear people say that. Because I remember the first time I went to uh, I went to Spain and I was in a cooking class and I was talking to some people from different parts of the world and they were all like, yeah, we're on holiday um, for six weeks. And I was like, six weeks. <laughs> I was like, you're going to take all your time at, at once because me, I'm, I'm the type. Well, at least I was. I've actually gotten better with this. Um, I would just take like a week. Cause I'll be fine. A week in another place is good with me. And then I'll, I'll go home and go back to work and then take another week and kind of spread it out. And, um, until recently I started doing like two weeks. Wow. Yeah. It's like, man. And then, you know, hearing you say a month, it's like, wow, a month away from home. <laughs> and you don't have to be away from home though. Yeah, that's right? true. You, you can so, do some of it home. Yeah. So that's what I, you know, two years ago, in the summer of 2020, what with COVID, it was finally like super okay. And even the, the required thing almost to not travel, um, which I hadn't wanted to do for a couple of years before anyway in the summer. But I was also slightly toasted, like <laughs> on, you know, if I had kept at it, I might well have burnt out. Uh, because I was working too much that year or that the first half of that year. And I had three weeks where I was just at home. I did not set foot on the sidewalk outside mm. my home for three wow. weeks. What'd you do for groceries? Kids. I have grown kids. They can shop. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Wow. Yeah. So you were really quarantined. Yeah, and it wasn't a quarantine. You know, it was it was an inner drive. There was no mm. external factor except COVID made it more okay with bunny mm -hmm. ears that people weren't like thinking that I was totally crazy for just wanting to stay at home. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't imposed upon me. It was entirely inside an inside job it's like mm. i don't want to i don't want <laughs> to leave my garden and my home mm -hmm. so i didn't um, yeah how much did you accomplish in that that time span i read 20 books oh wow yeah and did some gardening that was about mm. it you know it's like i wasn't working hard at home either i mm -hmm. was just being yeah. Some people might say that reading 20 books is working hard, but for me, that's <laughs> quite... Um, that's luxury. That's precisely. That is, you know, <laughs> luxuriating in opulence uh, of, of the wonders of literature. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's interesting. So this year, my one-week vacation, I spent on the road, basically. I went on a little coastal uh road trip or train trip rather but that was really nice that was the first time in in a couple of years that i actually felt like yeah i want to do this i don't want mm. to not do this mm -hmm. which has been the case for for a couple of years i just i haven't wanted to go anywhere mm -hmm. but it's been nice and it's an interesting point you make that uh, when you did your own self-quarantine, not motivated by COVID or anything, that COVID kind of made it more acceptable. And I wonder how many more people are more welcoming of just staying home. Yeah. Like how many of them have discovered, oh, wait, you know, home is it's not so bad after all. I don't have to go out every night and be with friends yeah. every night. Because I know during COVID, a lot of people like, cooked more and and discovered like, oh, cooking is actually fun and it's interesting and it's healthier and this and that. So I wonder how many more people are just staying. Well, we know people are working from home more, but what about just staying home? Like, I don't need to go to the club. I don't need to go to a bar. I could just stay home and it'd yeah. be okay. Yeah. I think that it, COVID gave many people and this, you know, 
from from a privileged point of view, which is my point of view, because that is mm -hmm. the way that you know that is my life at the moment, but and or always, <laughs> but but it is the slowing down to the speed of life. You know, I don't always have to be on the next thing and the latest thing and the hottest thing mm -hmm. and the fastest thing and the, you know, whatever it is, the coolest thing. It's like, no, I can, I can just be here and super enjoy myself. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that was, that was lovely. And then last year I did a couple of weeks as well. And it's, Usually in Sweden, there's still, I mean, there's less and less industry, but many industries do shut down for, for three or four weeks, mm. you know, and it's like, then you have to get away from there. You know, there's no work <laughs> for you to do there. Yeah. Um, except if you, like me, have been working with, with uh, construction um, projects where Okay, when production isn't running, that's the only th time that you can come in and actually rebuild a room or refurbish a room, you know, put in new epoxy flooring or, you know, do maintenance uh, or construction. So a lot of construction workers who work at least for pharma that I've, in like my, my industry, mm -hmm. they have had to work in the summer. Mm. Uh, which is always tricky because all of the pharma companies wants construction in the summer when there's nobody around. Um, um, because then you're not upsetting your normal production schedule. Yeah. Which if you need to break for a week, you know, it's like you have to, yeah, you have to make adjustments for it. But also in pharma, if you're, if you, kind of break the seals of the clean rooms you have to clean everything again and and reclassify the area and make sure that okay we still don't have more particles than we're supposed to we still don't have more microbial loads than what is acceptable etc so any such uh any such uh, ingrep, we say in Swedish, you know, any such little action that you take where you actually have builders coming in and tearing down a wall or, you know, it's like you're actually messing with the, with the classification of the, of the environment, uh, that is then one of the quality uh, aspects of a pharma facility. So it, you know, it's like, it's easier to do when there's no production anyway, and then you can just know that at the end of at the end of the vacation, you do a clean, and then you're kind of good to go again. Mm. Um, and I always like those. Uh, I always like those small businesses or businesses that shut down, as you just mentioned, altogether. Like the whole yeah. business goes on holiday. Yeah. Uh, I know. Yeah. I know. Like there's a bakery that does it, and it's in the UK. I've I've heard businesses say like, "Okay, we're going to be out for the holiday." Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. and so that that's always good. And I think in today's world where everybody is always constantly online and accessible, it's actually a really good thing to still mm -hmm. have a few of those. We're not here. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody's here. <laughs> it's dead. You know, there's no mm -hmm. action. So you're not missing a lot of things. There's not, you know, everybody's always constantly working anyway, but mm -hmm. I'm the only one who's not there. Then you know, okay, after a month, I'm going to have a gazillion emails and, you know, things to kind of catch up on. But if everybody in the company is, is at home vacationing, it also makes it a little bit easier in today's so hyper-connected world mm -hmm. to actually do shut down and, and like tune out of, of all of that, which I did last week. I did drop all social media and I didn't check anything of that. And I only, I skimmed incoming emails a couple of times, <laughs> mostly because I'm curious, because I also knew that if there would have been anything, I would have gotten a phone call, but mm. you know, no phone calls. So that's also one of the important things. I think you're not as, 
as uh, you know vital to the activities as you think. You know, it's mm-hmm. like no, the project actually runs fine without me. <laughs> right? And it's like that's one of those. It's like you know that's a little bit of a humility check. You can kind of mm-hmm. see, okay, yeah, actually. You know, it's good. I'm good to have around, but mm. I'm not, you know, if I leave, it's fine. There will be workarounds and somebody else will pick up the slack and, you know, which I think for me, I like that. Mm. Uh, but Yeah, I think that's signs of a good team that, you know, yeah. you can go away or someone can go away and someone else can pick up the slack, you know, yeah. as the, they say in sports, next man up. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I think that's a good thing. But as you did say, it's a, it's a stroke of humility to know that because some people, they think that, you know, they're so important and vital. They got to check their emails every day and work seven days a week and do overtime because the whole thing is going to crash if they don't, yeah. if they don't, uh, if they're not be there, there 24 yeah. seven. Exactly. Yeah. So I think, I think that's a great way to, to look at it. And uh, it's funny you mentioned humility and and gardening, and I had just uh, I took a short course with uh, what was that? I want to say it was Acumen um, Elizabeth Gilbert um, from Big Magic and Eat Pray mm-hmm. Love, and she was talking about creativity, and she actually talked about how gardening actually led to one of her novels. Uh, I forget the name of it. The because, signature of all things. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so you've, you've heard the story already. I don't know if I've heard the story. I've read the book, <laughs> though, and I love okay. the book. Okay, yeah, so the signature of all things. Because uh, someone had asked her, you know, about, you know, creativity and where does it come from and all these things. And so her point was really about being curious and and kind of just going with things and, and pulling on them. So she said she just started gardening and then she just was one day like, hmm, where does this plant come from? And where does this come from? And what is this? And then she started writing it down and she started traveling places to go to different gardens. And the next thing you know, she has a, she had a novel. And so when you said, you know, that you took those three weeks uh, in 2020 to just garden, you reminded me of uh, how amazing amazing things can come just from like gardening <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and it's it is that thing of of cur- i actually recorded with kate yesterday it's the 19th of august today and we recorded yesterday so last week's episode i can say when this has been released um and we were also speaking about curiosity as being one of these it's like it's such a key to living life Mm. it's like without curiosity it's like what's there (laughs) right it's like yeah you're kind of surviving possibly but are you living are you thriving is it mm-hmm. possible to thrive if you're not curious? Maybe it is, but I don't see how. Because mm-hmm. it's like you say, oh, wow, there's a butterfly. I want, you know, it's like on that flower. And I've never seen that flower. You know, it's like and, and on and on it goes, right? It is a, It is such a good way of making sure that I... I see what is. Curiosity can open my eyes to what is around me in in mm-hmm. life. But without it, it's like, ugh. Boring. I say boring. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things I that I, I learned from Elizabeth um and really loved was she talked about you know, being curious about so many different things. And, you know, growing up, my dad used to always say, you know, don't be a jack of all trades or master of none, which I think has some truth to it. But there's also like truth in uh, benefits of being a generalist. And I think Dave Epstein has talked about that in his book range. And 
And you can look at people like Elon Musk and and Kanye West, who like they have like these wide uh, spectrums of of skill sets. And one of the things that she said was that, you know, when you when you're interested in a bunch of things and you're just curious and you're like pulling on things, eventually you kind of find a thing like. Oh, man, I'm really curious in this. Or the other side is you find a thing and you go, you know, I'm actually not really that curious in this on this. And then you just let it go. And it's OK to do that. And I think sometimes, especially when I was younger, it was like, oh, it has to be this thing. And I have to. Well, once I sign up for it, I got to go all the way. And it's almost like, no, you could actually try it. If you're not really that into it, you can let it go. But the fact that you're curious, eventually you're going to fall on something like, oh, wow, this is really cool before the passion even comes, which is another mm-hmm. point she made, because then after you get into it and you really like it, then you find out you're passionate about it. And then, you know, it could go, it goes from there because then you become you know, insanely addicted and, and everything else yeah. that comes with it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's interesting that the signature of all things, I think in Swedish it's called something completely different. I think it's called <laughs> Alma Whitaker's Hemliga Liv. The Secret Life of Alma Whitaker, which is the mm. the main character of the of the book, but mm-hmm. it is such a good book, mm. um, and I I read it. It was kind of you know it totally surprised me that she'd mm. written a book basically about moss. It's mm-hmm. basically a book about moss. <laughs> you know the little green stuff that you walk on in the in the lawn that isn't supposed to be mm-hmm. in the lawn, but is in the lawn at least in my lawn. Um, it's like it's a book about moss. And you go, moss? What? Is, you know, <laughs> is there a more boring plant? And it's like it is so not boring. And all mm. of a sudden, I'm just filled with this reverence for moss. Mm. Just going, shit, it's the most fantastic little thing that is so unobtrusive, you know. It can be so in the background, doing its thing, you don't really know it, but man, it is old. Moss has been around for a long, long time, way Mm. longer than we've been around. Um, It's just fantastic and and i read that book because it's a thick book and i love thick books Mm -hmm. and i go how many years has elizabeth gilbert spent researching moths because she must have researched the hell out of that (laughs) to be able to write the book Mm -hmm. so yeah passion is is definitely without that without her becoming passionate about moss, mm-hmm. which I think she had to have become, mm-hmm. um, that book would not be what it is. And it's a really, mm-hmm. really good book. Um, that, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a very special book. And it's a very... I've actually told people who say, mm, I'm not too fond of Elizabeth Gilbert, which is fine, but I say... But that book is not, <laughs> you know, it's not the way that Elizabeth Gilbert is in the world. You know, she's buoyant and, and happy and talkative. And, and mm-hmm. even though she can talk about hard stuff as well, and, you know, she yeah. lived through hard stuff as well. So it's not that. But that book, if I had just read it, I would never have guessed that Elizabeth Gilbert was the author of it. Mm-hmm. It's- and that's the same way I felt. Uh, I, I was when I was watching the yesterday was actually the first time I saw her like in physical. I've just heard the name and I've heard it so much from Big Magic. And then from Big Magic, I just assumed that she was all about creativity. And I think when I read um, The Artist's Way, um, the Julia author. Cameron. Yeah, Julia Cameron gives big praise to Elizabeth Gilbert for Eat, Love, Pray, which kind of inspired her. And so I've always thought of her as like, oh, she's probably this insane, creative person, which she is, obviously. And then when she starts talking about plants and gardening, I'm like, oh, that's right. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it actually does connect. <laughs> yeah. 
But it's nice when, when, when sort of, again, new things open up and you, you mm -hmm. see this, it's like, okay, she wasn't what you expected or, you mm -hmm. know, there was something else there. I enjoy that. But speaking about something else, I have realized, I have no idea if those cute puppies that you keep posting on Instagram, are they your dogs? Oh no, those are my <laughs> those are my cousin's dogs. Uh my cousin has two little dogs and uh my cousin and I are best friends, so they're not my Just dogs, but they're her dogs and close close enough. Cause yeah, exactly. A lot Everyone asks me that. Yeah. <laughs> they're the cutest uh, dogs, Bryson and Olivia. Um is their names. So yeah, not mine. I would I would love to have dogs, but I want to be responsible, and I know in the winter time when it's really cold and it's snowing, I'm not going to want to walk any dogs. So I just, I just stay away. <laughs> Maybe if you had a dog and you are responsible, you would walk. Yeah, but I just don't even want to risk it. I think a dog is too <laughs> precious to even risk it because I, I really don't like cold winter mornings to like jump outside and. Walk a dog. I, I love dogs too much to even risk putting one in in that <laughs> situation. I I don't have a dog, and I don't want to have a dog. But I, <laughs> I dog sit a dog now and again, and um, that dog is the best because he, you know, because I'm not my I I wake up around six all on my own without you know I don't have an mm -hmm. alarm or anything. I just wake up, but. Mm -hmm. I love just laying around in bed, reading and journaling and doing some meditation and stuff. So I seldom get out of bed before eight or nine. Mm -hmm. But that dog has no issues. He he can wait. He can wait until <laughs> night to do his thing outside. So it's like it's a perfect match. Because mm -hmm. um, if there was a dog that had to go out at six, mm, no. Thank you, mm -hmm. but no, thank you. Not for me. <laughs> uh, I like my I like my slow mornings. Do um, you do you walk him or do you just let him out in like in a backyard or something? I let him out. I get dressed and then I walk him. Oh, nice. Okay, so he kind of gets a double dose. <laughs> yeah, he gets a double dose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's it's. It's, you know, it's nice. But I have a cat story. Do you want to hear a cat story? Oh, yeah. Love stories. Because Pop the cat, my cat, he went up to my mom with my oldest uh, two and a half weeks ago when I went on a retreat. So I was mm -hmm. on retreat for four days, and then I was home for a week, and then I was going to be gone for one week. So. It was like, okay, then he Pop might as well be at my mom's place because then he's taken care of, so I don't have to worry about it. And whenever my, whenever Pop is at my mom's place, she has to put a notice in the local grocery store saying Pop the cat is visiting. So if you see him, you know, no worries. He always comes to the little Ika because he just loves people. So chill. He walks into the store. Oh, um, wow. And so she, he had a collar on, but not a tag with name and number. So she put on her dog's tag with her number and she got called. People were called. People were calling. Pop the cat is outside Ika. Pop the cat is outside Ika. Are you going to come pick him up? So she went, you know, one evening, she went eight <laughs> times to pick up the freaking cat. And finally I said, well, take off the the number from his collar, you know, he finds his way home. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go because the Ika is right outside of my mom's garden. So it's mm -hmm. just next to it. But so then I went up there because on my little West Coast trip, I was stayed at my mom for a night and then I went up, did my thing. And then I came back after a week and stayed one night and then went home. So I left on Sunday, and on Wednesday I get a text from my mom saying, Pop hasn't been seen since Sunday. I thought, oh, mm. Pop, 
You little rascal, you. And you <laughs> never really know because it is, there's plenty of summer houses there. So mm -hmm. there's a chance that somebody has locked him in his, locked him in and, and you mm -hmm. know, taken off for, because now we're going away. But it's like, okay, he'll come. And then I came home to her place Friday evening at five. So I start calling for him, no pop. And she says, oh, I've been so worried. And I've been walking around calling for him, no pop. So I take a long walk calling out for him and, you know, talking to people, et cetera. And then I, I text a friend of mine who also lives there. And she said, have you put a notice in the little Facebook group um, that he's gone? And it's like, no, I haven't. Because she had texted me a link to that Facebook group a week before saying, is this who I think it is? And it was a little <laughs> notice of, you know, three images of Pop outside of Ica saying, whose is this? And mm -hmm. that we know, you know, it's like, this is just the sweetest cat ever. And I have never met a more satisfied customer of the grocery store because nobody has ever topped his purring. Um, you know, so I wrote a little notice there saying it's my cat, you know, and you know, he's fine. He, he knows where mom lives. And so it's cool. So I posted in that Facebook group on Friday evening at 10, 9, 10, saying that, you know, we're going home tomorrow. Has anybody seen Pop? If so, please call. Um, or if you see him, please call. And before I, I went to sleep, somebody had posted... He was at, on the little playground on when no, he was outside Ika on Wednesday with a, a picture of Pop lying outside Ika, just, you know, being adorable in the way that he is. So, okay, then I know Wednesday he was okay. So chances are he hasn't been locked up in somebody's summer house. Um, and in the morning, somebody had written... Oh, yeah, he was on the little playground last night around five. And the little playground is even closer to my mom's garden than Ika <laughs> is. So I was like, cat, I've been calling for you. If you're that close, why aren't you coming? Mm -hmm. So it's like, ah. So I, I took a piece of paper. I wrote a notice and said, Pop the cat is going home to Malmö today. If you see him, please call. And I went down to Ika that just opened, I put it up on that notice that my mom has put up, you know, saying that he's likely going to come. And I went into the store and I spoke to one of the people who work there and I said that, you know, Pup's going home and we haven't seen him all week. So would you please, you know, call if you see him? Oh yeah, sure. And I'll tell all of my colleagues and stuff. Okay, fine. So then I walked to rounds kind of the the and the blocks close to the Ica, the playground etc calling out for him and i come to the playground again and a lady comes out from a garden that's just adjacent to the playground and to the bottom half of my mom's garden and she's like who are you are you yeah i'm looking for pop and she said he was just here and i went what the fuck? <laughs> cat and she said, oh, he's just the loveliest. You know, we don't, we don't, uh, we always have it open to, to our little cottage. So he comes in and, you know, I wake up in the middle of the night and he's lying sleeping be between my legs. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> cat. And she said, and don't you live in Malmö? Yes, I do live in Malmö. Yeah, I live in Malmö too. And, and I've. I've seen him on Instagram and he's just so cute. And if you ever need a cat sitter, just call, you know, we'd be happy to. <laughs> I was like, okay. And she said, I'll go in and see if he's still there. Everybody else is still sleeping, but I'll check to see. So she went in. I was like, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. She comes out and she shakes her head saying, no, the little girl just said that he just left. Okay, cat. <laughs> You know, so I, I walk out onto the street next to the playground and I see that I have a missed call. 
and a voicemail. So I start to listen to the voicemail. It's this older gentleman who says, I saw the notice on Ika that you're looking for for Pop. He's right here on my front porch. Um, and I'm on this road number 10. And I was like, I'm on that road. And I look up. And across the road is number 10, and I look, and there on the front porch <laughs> is Pop being petted by this man. And I was like, Pop? And he's like, come sauntering, you know, hello, have you been looking for me? <laughs> and I'm like, Pop, when I call you, you need to come. And he's like, well, you know. So the man says... Oh, he's just the sweetest cat. Yeah, I know. And he said, we have an outdoors cat that has food outside. So they've been sharing food all mm. week. Ah, mm. that is why he hasn't even bothered <laughs> to come to my mom's place to, to like stock up on food because he's just getting yeah. it. So I pick him up. Thank the man and, and walk to my mom, who is then relieved beyond belief, you know, because she has been so worried that maybe he's dead or gone or locked up or anything. It's all her fault, you know, even though it's my fault because I've taken him there. And so I, I, I walk in the front door, put him down, close the door. He goes straight to the garden door and says, meow. I want out. It's like, no, you are grounded. <laughs> you are so grounded right now, Kat. You're not going anywhere because we're going home. <laughs> so I walked to the little Ika. I took down the notice and I walk into the store to find this the, the staff again. So I found, found the same lady that I talked to and one of her colleagues. They're standing there packing up goods and stuff. So I said, Pop has now been found. Uh, and I just wanted to let you know that he's going home today. And they start to gush. Oh, he's just the sweetest cat. It's so much fun. I mean, it's not really good that he comes walking into a grocery store, but he's just so cute. And it's just <laughs> so much fun to have him and everything. And, you know, and I was like, you know, my mom thinks she's a nuisance because he's a nuisance and she doesn't want to be a nuisance. And they were saying, mm. no, 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 tell your mom. It's not a bother at all. It's just fun. <laughs> okay. So I thank them. I turn around and I start to walk and I hear one of them say to the other, oh, I'm going to miss Pop so much. Mm. <laughs> so wow. I walk home and a couple of hours later, my mom drives us to the train and now we're home again. Then I come home. We come home Saturday afternoon. Sunday, a, a girl from a couple of doors down is playing with the girl the next house over. And they come up to me. And they can look into my garden. And, and they say, is Pop home now? Because they had asked the week, two weeks before, they had asked, is Pop around? It's like, no, he's at my mom's place for vacation. Oh, it's like, yes. Well, sorry. So... They come and they say, is Pop home now? It's like, yes, Pop is back now. We, we came back yesterday. Yeah, I saw him yesterday. The, one of the girls said, the one from a couple of doors down, she said, and I cried a little tear of joy because he's my favorite cat of all of the wow. cats in the neighborhood. And I just went, oh, my goodness. He is such a people lover. Yeah. He's just the sweetest cat, um, but he does kind of stress my mom out, at least, and me a little bit, <laughs> even though he's like, it's fine. It will be fine, because he's just, yeah, yeah, but, so that's, that's my cat story. Um, <laughs> that's and so a, that's I was a great right, story. I wrote in the in the post that I'd written in the in the little Facebook group, the local Facebook group, I said, you know, I edited and wrote that Pop has now been found and we're going home, so thank you. And people were responding, saying, oh, we're going to miss him so much. It's been so fun to go down to Ica to visit him. And, you know, welcome back next summer. Um, so he's a, he's, a, he's a little famous person or cat. Um, but that's what I was going to say. Like, man, he's, he's like a legend. 
And there's so many stories in that story because as you're speaking, I'm like, wow, what kind of community is this? That <laughs> Everyone just knows each other. It lets your cat, uh, they let a cat in their home, in their bed. That would never happen where I live. <laughs> and then uh, th- you use the word cottage, which, by the way, I, I only ever heard in Canada, uh, you know, they use oh, for really? vacation. They use as, va- you know, they call it their vacation home cottages and they call it uh, cottage country or cottage land. Yeah. And so when you said that, I was like, oh, I guess they use that in Sweden as yeah, well. Yeah. The Swedish but, word oh. for that would be stuga. Sommarstuga is summer house, but it's summer mm. cottage. So, mm. because it's like a summer house can be a big grand one, but mm-hmm. sommarstuga is a little cottage. Little. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But it just sounds like an incredible. I'm like, I have to go to Sweden just off this mm-hmm. cat story because yeah. the community sounds so. Like, oh, Facebook posts and put a note in people calling your mom eight times a day. And <laughs> it's just like, wow, what a community. And mm-hmm. I mean, a cat, I mean, Pop just sounds like a legend. It and, a you know, heart. you see some cats and they're like, shoo, get out of here, get away. And not Pop. It's like, come on, you know, hang with my cat, come in my bed, yeah. come in my restaurant. So, And it was interesting, the, the lady who he has been sleeping with all week, you know, he's, an, <laughs> he's, uh, he's cheating on me. Um, <laughs> she said, your mom has a black cat as well, right? Yeah, she does. It's sixth. And she said, he's not around at all. No, I said, because he doesn't love people. Pop ah. the cat loves people. So mm. it's a very, very individual trait, I would say. Pop the cat is mm-hmm. the... I've had some unique cats with great personalities, but he's the uniquest and greatest mm-hmm. personality. And so he is really mm. the most special cat in the most positive way, even mm. though he actually goes into Ika and... <laughs> Could you please? And, you know, people had been writing saying that, yeah, he was there in the morning. And then in the evening when I came back to Ika, he was still there. And then I came (laughs) down an hour after they closed and he was still there. So I gave him some food. And I'm Mm. like, yeah, he is such a (laughs) clever cat, that one. He knows just how Uh. to make sure that everybody, you know, sings to his tune. Uh Um, What a brilliant cat. Yeah, he is a brilliant. And where is he now? Right now he is outside because he was oh, inside, he so he went he went out. So where you live, does he walk around too or he stays on the property? Not even close. Not even close. So he close. walks around too. He and you still have around. the t- hag on him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's just in the neighborhood right now. He's he's somewhere in someone's garden or in someone's <laughs> there was in the local Facebook group now that I'm here where I am I think it was last summer somebody had put up a, a notice saying oh we just went down into our basement guest room and there was this gorgeous cat on the bed whose <laughs> is it and somebody else had said, oh, that's Pop. He lives, lives a few blocks up the street. You know, so he <laughs> is famous. And I was like, yes, it's my cat. You know, feel free to spray water on him if you don't want him there. And they were like, oh, yeah. no, he's such a pleasure to have around. And I'm like, "Wow! oh, my God, this cat. So he Man. is he is well known. Uh, throughout. Are cats, are cats bigger than, more popular than dogs there? Wait, 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 I'm gonna, wait, Um, wait, 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 I have to, there you go. I had somebody call and I can't take it now because I'm here, (laughs) right? Uh, I'm just texting him to let him know that is not a good, no problem, not a good time. Okay, so... (laughs) I would say that I think cats are the most popular pet globally. There are more cats number in numbers than dogs. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if if that is, you know, cats, dogs, both of them are very common pets. And mm-hmm. many people have them. There's, there's a, quite a few cats. In the neighborhood. Um, and dogs as well? 
and dogs as well. But they okay. don't, you know, it's like cats are in Sweden. And this is, you know, it's a little bit of a touchy topic, this one, because there are mm. people who, who really don't want somebody else's cat coming into their home. And I can totally mm. understand that, you know, if you're mm -hmm. allergic or whatever, you just don't like them. But, but cats are... Uh, dogs you have to have on a lead except for a few months in the winter in most uh in most places in sweden i think it's local government who sets the rules but you know you have to have them on a lead from march till september or october or something because of baby birds and you know whatnot um but cats or actually, there was a ruling a couple of years ago, somebody who was really pissed at their neighbor's cats coming in and, you know, sleeping in their, you know, garden furniture and making it all hairy and stuff. It's like, yeah, because they do that. But they said that it is a cat's nature. So if you have an outdoor, a cat that is also outdoor, you, you are allowed to let them be outside because that is a cat's nature um, mm. so they have gotten a little bit of a legal protection to be cats mm -hmm. uh, interesting wow but then i am i am always quick to say you know if if somebody really doesn't want him you know take out you know a, a spray bottle of water or you know take your your garden hose you don't have to put it on the really really hard but you know mm -hmm. if you if you spray him with water a couple of times he'll he'll understand that he's not very welcome <laughs> um and there's plenty of pl places here apparently where he's very welcome so you know he's, yeah he he'll, he'll find a good place um, yeah. wow yeah because here in new york uh dogs are uh king like dogs are everywhere cats are yeah. very few in number and also much different cats just like if you own a cat your cat stays in your house your cat yeah. doesn't go out because there's a lot of stray cats which they call street cats yeah. and actually people fear them because they think like oh they're street cat they could have rabies or sometimes they get you'll hear them in and and um fights with raccoons or other cats yeah. and things and so it's very different from how you're describing it yeah. and it also sounds like in sweden people just leave their doors open much more for for cats to just walk in apparently <laughs> that's, yes that's, yeah <laughs> that's just the, that's just the funniest thing that's that's like wow yeah. um but it's funny because in morocco um cats are very huge in morocco like cats yeah. are they're considered like holy i mean yeah. and there's cats everywhere and it's it's more it's it sounds more like what you're describing in sweden i was at a um i took a cooking class in morocco at like a uh like a refuge place for for um for women and there was a cat that just like came in like while i was in the cooking class and i was like oh you guys have a cat and they're like oh no it's not ours it's like from the street and i was like oh because he's hopping on, he's hopping on the table it's like yeah that, that's what they do and literally, he just, he came to me and he hopped up next to me. He started walking behind me, rubbing, like rubbing all on yep. me. And yep. I was like, wow, this is interesting. And like literally every restaurant, you know, a cat might just walk in, go yep. between your legs. They're all in the street. And, you know, I was talking to a friend out there and like, oh, yeah, cats, like dogs are considered nothing in Morocco. Yep. <laughs> Everything is cats, cats, cats. And I was like, wow, it's, it's amazing how different parts of the world you know just so yeah, different and, and many parts of the world i would say that cats are much more prevalent especially street cats you can see street dogs as well but mm -hmm. in thailand and in in india at least where i've been mm -hmm. in india you i mean you see both but cats you know they're they're like skilled they they know how <laughs> to make a living somehow <laughs> so it is very, very common that you see a lot of those. And I mean, in Thailand, having pets that way, that's a new thing. You know, you had mm. you had a water buffalo or you had chickens and stuff, right? Back in the days. But but to have 
a pampered pet. That's a very Western thing that has spread mm -hmm. and is spreading. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's quite a lot of, of cats and maybe mostly smaller dogs that are mm -hmm. making that career, you can say. Um, <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I like, I like the, the fact that it's, it's like, well, we are sharing a life, you know, and I actually, I got Pop the cat from my, from my first husband. He, he bought him when he moved to an apartment. And Pop was miserable because he couldn't, mm. he wasn't allowed outside. And he, he had been mm. an outside cat when he grew up, kind of, but he was, he was, I think it was a couple of months old when, or more than a couple of months old when, when Oscar bought him. But then after, and we took care of Pop the cat when he went away on holiday. So I met Pop the Cat first when he was nine months and just fell mm. in love, hopelessly mm. fell in love with this cat because it's just mm. the sweetest cat. And then a couple of years later, um, my first husband, my ex-ex-husband said, you know, <laughs> I have to get rid of him because he's just so unhappy here. He has to have a home where he can be outside. And so after mm. some negotiations, at home, <laughs> uh, he made it here, and I'm so happy about that because he's just—he is such a—he's such a character. The na the neighbor across the street in the summer, she came over and we were talking, and she said, "Poop the cat." I have never met <laughs> a cat with as much integrity and humor as him. <laughs> like. Hmm? Cause he's very special, and he is. He has a he has a great sense of humor. That cat. Mm. Um, Does he have friends in the neighborhood? He has some friends, and then he has some some. He's not so happy. My, I live in a um, it's like a double house. It's a it's a coupled house, so there's a, mm -hmm. a wall in between, and so my neighbor in, on the other side. She got uh, two baby kittens. Well, I don't even remember. I think it's a year ago. Well, whatever. They're mm -hmm. a year or so. A year, a year and a half. Uh, and Pop had been, you know, he'd been basically living there as well. He knows he lives here, but he's been living there as well. And he wasn't so happy about that. So he's a little bit concerned about those cats, you know, trying to make sure mm. that it's still his turf, which mm. it technically might be, but not really, you know. So there's, but they will sort that out. Mm -hmm. You know, the cats will have to figure that one out, <laughs> right? And Pop is one of those cats that walks for miles. He can take, you know, he walks, he can go on walks with me for two kilometers, no issues. And I'm not having him on a lead. I just, you know, he's just, we just talk and he comes along and he can tag along with other people too. Um, you know, Hey, here's somebody, they look good. Let's go for a walk with them. And so, hmm. um, he's special. That's another thing that's not, that's another thing that's not common. You. Go on walks with your cat. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's very interesting. Yeah, it's it's funny. Wow, I really want to go to Sweden now. It's funny. I have a lot of Jamaican friends, and in Jamaica, uh, dogs never go in the house. Dogs in Jamaica are seen as guards. So when you have a yeah, dog, have to be your, your dog just is just outside protecting the property. So a lot of my Jamaican friends, when they first came to America. They could not believe people had dogs in their house. It's like, why, did, why is the dog in your house? And then on the bed and on the furniture and sleeping. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a culture shock. And hearing you talk about cats right now, I'm like, I have to talk to my cat friends when I get to work. Because I have some friends who are, uh, co-workers who are big cat. One one of my co-workers has about 10 cats. Oh, wow. He like rescues, he rescues yeah. cats and everything. Mm -hmm. But when I when I tell him this story, oh man, it's, it's insane. Oh, wow. And also India, you mentioned India. 
I have a trip planned to India this year, so I would love oh, to wow. uh, Where talk are you to going? you about. Sh- uh, I'm landing in. Uh, hmm, you think I would know? The trip's in March. I'm landing in. Uh, what's the big city there? The big city. There's a couple of big cities there. Well, uh, yeah, have, I have to. I, I, have, I have to Delhi look it up and tell you. Have Bangalore. You yeah, have, I'm landing. Have, in, I'm landing in New Delhi. In New Delhi. Hmm. Yeah. What part did you visit? I I was uh, working for a project where we built a facility, a pharma facility outside of Mumbai. So mm. I've been there just, you know, for three years, but just a week, a week, a week, two weeks, eight, seven or eight times. So I wasn't staying there. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, in 2014, I think, me and my family and my mom, we went down to Kerala in the south mm-hmm. tip of, of India, which is a very good, it's like, it's a very good place to visit India if you haven't been to India because there's less culture shock um, yeah. aspect and it's a good place. It's a, It's like... It's one of my Indian friends said that it's funny. It's the only place that has a democratically elected communist ruling uh, or communist Mm. local government. Um, Mm. But it's like it has the highest literacy rate in all of India, you know, like 95% of everybody can read and stuff. So um, it's a lovely place. But Reddy from last season is... Not in New Delhi, I think. He's in Bangalore or what? It, well, he's in he's in one of those places. Um, mm, he's I he's Indian. Pe- yeah. And and is he a part of a Kimbo community or someone you no, met? Oh. No, I met him oh, okay, on Twitter. Okay. I met him on Twitter. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But Maybe he's I'll have to a, connect with him. I can, I'd love to connect you with him because Reddy is yeah. a character. And oh, yeah. I love him. You should listen to a couple of our episodes from last season because he is just fantastic. Uh, um, and he's li- he's living there now. Yep. He okay. Born and bred I'll have, Indian. I'll, I'll have yep. to I have to check it out, and then uh, you can connect us and yeah. Yeah. share any notes that you have. Um, now that we're talking, I actually think I'm landing in Mumbai, but I have to check. <laughs> I have to check. I planned it. Like when I saw the deal and I didn't really pay much attention to it, I like to plan as I get closer, but I'm looking so forward to that. So what are you, how long will you be there? Uh, two weeks. Two weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm I'm hoping that's enough time to kind of hop around and I definitely want to experience like yoga and, you know, yeah. do, I, I've, I've spoken to a few people who live there that I met in, um, while coaching in story skills and uh, another two in the Alt MBA. So I have a good you know, pretty good uh, network of people that will show me around, but the more the merry. Yeah, <laughs> I like getting yeah, the, uh, yeah. I like getting the, the, the true experience as much as possible. I, when I was in Mumbai was when I was also reading, um, Shantaram by what's his name? Gregory Roberts, yada, yada, something or other. I don't remember his name, but Shantaram is a novel, uh, that takes place in Mumbai. Mm. It's a thick book, but it is, it is a very good, it's a fiction story, but it's a book that really, it's like he gets India in the book. It's like, so when you read it and you have been there and, or you're going there, it's like, you can really see he's, he's like, he's really caught the essence of of a lot Mm. of the experiences that. I and many with me have or have had when we when we go to India. Um, hmm. And it's 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 funny. I've I've always been I've always loved Indian food and I love Indian authors. <laughs> but I've never really been you know eager to go to India. Hmm. Um and I still am not. When we got home from the from the India visit with my kids, which I wanted to do because both me and their father were working on this India project for three years, four years, and we were talking about India and going there and you know bringing home 
you know, saris and salva cameses and Indian snacks and, and, you know, so there was a lot of India during a couple of years of their childhood. So it's like, I wanted them to experience it. Mm -hmm. Um, but when we got home, they were like, when are we going back to India? And I'm like, I'm done. Oh, wow. Sorry, but I'm oh, done. Like you can go, yeah. but I'm not going anymore. <laughs> I've done, I've done India now. Um, even yeah. though there's, of course, I mean, it is a colossal country that really was never a country until the British people uh, kind of left it, um, mm. you know, because it's been, what, 800 or 1,000 smaller kingdoms and dukedoms and whatever. So mm. it's, a, it's, an, it's an interesting place. Uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, for so sure. will you be taking a cooking class in India too? This seems to be your oh, thing. Oh yeah, oh absolutely my thing. I, I, for some, some reason a cooking class it's like it gives me like a, like an advantage on the culture because you learn so much from the food yeah. and the, yeah. especially I love the cooking classes where they bring you to the market and where they show you how they shop. And so I'll definitely be signed up for a cooking class in India. And maybe I can actually go in the home of someone because I, I did that in Morocco. Uh, the cooking class is actually in the home of a native Moroccan. And she taught us how to make uh, tangine. And so yeah. Yeah. it was just incredible. So, yeah, cooking class, top of the list. <laughs> and maybe multiple. If I if I go to different cities, yeah, there should. might be some differences in the culture. So I'll have to do it's multiple. It's totally but... different. I mean, the, yeah. especially north and south of India has completely different mm. um, ways of, you know, there's rice in one and there's there's not rice in the other. There's more potatoes mm -hmm. and, and bread. And so it's like it's completely, uh, completely different. But yeah. all of it very, very good. I really enjoy oh, yeah. Indian food. And I love the fact that in India, you either eat veg or non-veg. In Sweden, you're a meat eater or not a meat eater. <laughs> but in India, you're a vegetarian or not a vegetarian. Wow. Yeah. So in, in the, you know, in, in restaurants and stuff, it's like veg and non-veg. Mm. Um, so that's their, that's how it is like. Yeah, that's the, the, the norm in a, in a yeah, way. Yeah, that's. The, yeah. Mm. Interesting. I know I've, I've heard that they're, in India, they're like cows walking the streets. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. they're like, you know, they're holy they're and hate, sacred. They're holy. So you, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And you see them on the street chewing plastic bags that people have tossed out oh, with man. leftover foods and stuff. So there's, there was this program we watched many years ago of some like veteran, Indian veterinary, veterinary people who were, you know, taking care of cows that were hit by a car or, you know, it's like they were taking care of these stray animals of sorts, not, not people's animals. Um, they were operating on a cow that had like 14 kilos of plastic bags in its belly system. It was like, Mm. Mm. that's not very nice uh, but you you see them everywhere and you know all of a sudden you look left or right and there's an elephant with a moat <laughs> walking um, mm. so it's it's a special it's a very special place uh, yeah. in many many ways yeah I'm looking forward to it for sure yeah so do you, when you have been cooking in Spain and in Morocco and, and in wherever you've gone, does that make it home to you? Have you done tagine since you were in Morocco? No, I'm not, I'm not interested in cooking uh, like, like in my house. I, I, I love the experience of learning and just knowing and then having it. But it's so funny because a lot of cooking classes will say, all right, we're going to email you the recipe. And I'm like, you could email it, but I'm not. Not I'm not going to do it, <laughs> but uh, I do love the experience and the food is always in. I still think the spaghetti I had in Italy is the greatest spaghetti I ever had, but I'm not, I'm not uh, doing that. Especially that, that was such a long process. There's no way I'm doing that, but 
when I go to restaurants now and I see that kind of stuff on the menu, I'm like, oh yeah, I know what that is. Let me get that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't do it at home. Cooking is just not my thing. Um, which is so interesting. You do cooking classes, but you don't cook. Because <laughs> I would think if you were, if you said like, no, I don't cook. Cooking is not my thing. Then mm -hmm. you wouldn't consider cooking yeah. classes in a foreign country. Mm -hmm. yeah, my friends say the same thing. Like, why do you do it and yeah. you don't like cooking? Yeah. And it's like, honestly, it's the people, it's the culture. And I do love food. I just don't want to do it at home. I'll do it one time, learn from the masters and the, and the chefs. And I'm done and I'm okay with it. You know, I'd rather go back and do the cooking class again than cook it at home. <laughs> but do you but, not then even like, you know, if you and friends were saying like, okay, let's let's come get together and cook together and then eat, would you do that? Oh yeah, I would bring out the oh yeah, I would do that. My family has done that sometimes. Yeah, I'll bring out the recipes then. Yeah. Um we've had Thanksgivings where our family all had to yeah, participate. chip in and, and cook, yeah, chip yeah. in and yeah. do it right there in person, and it was it was fun. It was fun in a lot of ways. One of the ways is because my grandmother, who usually does all the cooking, was like, "Get out of the way! You're doing it wrong." <laughs> it's like it's like well, you said you wanted help. It's like forget it. Go go sit down. I'll I'll do it. And <laughs> so, uh, yeah. you know, that's always funny. But yeah, I would do it. You know, for family and friends. But me personally, I just I cook enough to survive and. Um, but that I'm sounds not, so boring, though. <laughs> You're cooking it up is to boring. survive? What does that even mean? It's like <laughs> fast noodles and, and you know. It's oh, like no, 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 no. No, it's mostly uh, it's mostly salads. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll have an air fryer. I'll put some salmon mm -hmm. in the air fryer or uh, steak occasionally, you know, with vegetables. I keep it very simple. I don't, you know, I can't even tell you the last time my oven's been on. I don't get into too much but you do know you detail cook for yourself every day or do you mostly eat out oh yeah no no no. so some days um i'll have a salad and that'll be like my my dinner and breakfast i'll have like scrambled eggs or whatever like that um yeah i, I can go weeks or months without eating out the dinner is just my food at home is just very simple it's going to be in the air fryer or on the stove or a salad or um I guess it'll be considered eating out. I'll go to a supermarket that we have locally and I'll get some sushi. Yeah. yeah. But I don't I don't I don't make extravagant, you know, lasagnas and macaroni and cheeses and I don't get into that. <laughs> hmm. And I have a lot of friends who love cooking and mm -hmm. cook for me all the time. So that's a another huge, huge bonus. Um sometimes it's too much. Uh, like literally I have a ton of friends like, oh, I made this and I made too much here. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, great. <laughs> okay. So you even get leftovers from them. Yeah. I get food all the time, work, family all the time. So I'm always well fed. So I'm, I'm, when I say cook to survive, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm more than yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah. It, it, precisely. Cause it doesn't sound as if you're deprived. Oh, uh, no, 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 of, no, no, no. Good food experiences no, definitely not definitely not no. i'm probably too i'm probably having too many <laughs> oh man but i did want to ask you uh two things um one was what what book what, what are you reading right now and then the second uh is you heard about akimbo uh this being their last time around yeah. with the workshops and just you know some of your yeah. thoughts on that if you were going to take any more workshops or what yeah yeah so right now I finished reading yesterday I finished reading a book that in Swedish is called Kvinnor jag tänker på om natten which is by <laughs> an uh, Finnish author Mia Kankimäki or something uh, translated it means um, the women I think about at night mm. and it is a fantastic novel or it's not actually a novel it is it is this female Finnish author who has researched fantastic women, like going back maybe 500 years, 600 years. And she researches them, you know, artists and authors and, and painters and um, 
And she she researches them and goes there. So she's been to Florence and Rome and Japan and 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 stuff. And then she's written this fantastic book where she she kind of gets into a, a conversation with these women. Well, the only woman in the book that is still alive. There's just one woman who's still alive. Is an old Japanese or what it sounds like, weird artist uh, that was born in 29 or something. So she might not be alive today, but she was when, when the book was written. But it's just, it's, it's hard to explain, but, she, you know, female adventurers who travel the world in a time when females couldn't do that, but they did that. Hmm. You know, so it's just, it's it's a really, really extremely well-written, very evocative book in many ways, uh, because it makes, shines a light on the privilege of today, shines the light on, why haven't I heard of these women before? It shines a light on how many of the, like, Renaissance painters, you know, it's male, 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 forever and ever and ever. And the few females that were around, you know, have hardly before made it anywhere. You know, she'd been searching um, through the, the art museum in Florence to find, she knew that they were there, that they had a self-portrait or something, and she was just searching for it desperately. And then, towards the end of the book, she came down to Florence again, and they actually had um, an exhibition of one or two of these Renaissance female painters. It's like, ah, oh, something's happening. There's a little bit of a shift, but it's a really, I, yeah, I really enjoy that book. Uh, and it's like, it's like a bonus book. It's like reading. I <laughs> didn't have to read eight biographies. I could just read this one book. Mm, good point. Yeah. And get all of these fantastic, um, and she starts with Karen Blixen. Um, the the Danish noble woman who went down to to um, uh, to Kenya, I think, uh, Isaac Dinesen. She came home afterwards and became an author. The is it called My Africa? Out of Africa is the movie with mm. um, I don't even remember who played her, but. And I don't even remember what, well, anyway, Out of Africa is a great book. It's the story about her life. Mm. It's the story about Colin Blixen and her life. Um, so, yeah, fantastic, fantastic book. Highly recommended. And I know it's been translated to English because I checked that on, on uh, Goodreads. Um, and... Making me realize as well, I don't know that I've read many books by Finnish authors. Hmm. Hmm. Why haven't I read books by hmm. Finnish authors? Because this is a really good book. Um, so that was a little bit of one of those. Hmm. Um, How many books are you up to now? Um... Let's see. I am. Um, let's see. We'll check on Goodreads and see what it says. It <laughs> says that I have read 72 books this year. So I've actually 72. slacked off a little bit. I was up mm. at, um, you know, uh, you before the out. summer. <laughs> yeah, precisely. Before the summer, I had, I was like, 22 or 24 books ahead of schedule. Now I'm just down to 17 books ahead of schedule because I wrote yeah. that I would read 88 books this year. Um, yeah. 
But I have like 10 books going or something. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried. <laughs> Uh, uh -huh. 10 books going at once. Oh, man. I get upset with myself when I'm reading two at once. Really? <laughs> I love that. I love reading many at once, though. For me, it's, yeah. a, it's a boost, especially because then I can pick different books. I can pick different quality books that require different things of me. If I'm tired, I will not pick up The Master and His Emissary by Ian McGill Christ. <laughs> but I can pick up a Sarah J. Mass novel, um, you know. So, so I like having having many going. But what are you reading yeah. at the moment? Oh, right now I'm reading uh, this book here called Imaginable uh, by O. J. Jane McGonigal. Yeah, she's McGonigal, a cool. Yeah. She's a cool cat. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm reading that, and uh, and I also am reading. Uh, Unsafe thinking. I don't by, know that uh, one. Jonah, Jonah Sachs, Sachs. Yeah. What's that one about? Yeah. Uh, it's about um, not always going with the normal, like the social norms, or that's always how we've done things. Or uh, it talks a lot about when people say, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with my gut on this one," or just the things that we've become accustomed to and used to, and never really questioned why things are being done that way. So it's really about you know thinking different and stretching your thinking and your thoughts. Um, so they kind of connect in a way, um, mm -hmm. but they're both interesting. And this one, uh, imaginable. It's interesting because I've never read about futurists and it's never really been any interest to me. But as I'm reading, I'm like, hmm, this is pretty interesting stuff, you know, and especially if you could if you could actually do something about it. But what I've liked most about it so far, and I'm still early in the book, is just the questions that it's made me ask. Because uh, one of the big things about futurists is futurists think in 10 years. So they're always asking like, what will this look like in 10 years? And so um, I've been asking like, hmm, how would, you know, this look like in 10 years? How will people be doing this in 10 years? And, you know, of course you're not going to be correct. You're a hundred percent, you're guessing and you're predicting based on trends and different things. So it made me think about things that I've, I've honestly never thought about, um, which Great. is, which is cool. Cause it's, uh, I think it's also a part of empathy, you know, thinking about different things. Like for me, I've been thinking about, well, one question I asked myself yesterday was, how will the way people give be different in 10 years? Like, will we still have nonprofits the same way that they are? Will there still be, you know, like Jude's Hospital and Save the Children, all those? Will it still be like online? Will it still have GoFundMes and things of that nature? So I've been asking those kind of questions. And, and uh, so it's interesting in that way, for sure. And it's so, it, I, I really like hearing that, and it sounds as if they're both books that really can provide some tanky spiam uh, in a good <laughs> way, right? Opening up for questions. But I, I wonder how many people think, I don't think many people think 10 years ahead, mm -hmm. but is there anybody who thinks 100, 1,000? 10,000, mm. 100,000 years ahead? Is there yeah, anybody probably like Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not, I'm not so sure about that one. Because he seems to say that, well, we had screwed this up, so let's go to Mars. <laughs> yeah, then we're going to yeah, exactly. screw that up too, you know, for sure. Um, but, but it's like, it, it is this, the, the aspect of, of like the long arcs, which is one of my favorite things. It's like a human life is a really small arc of time, you know, mm -hmm. it's like nothing. But the long arcs of time, you know, what was it like a thousand years ago, 10,000 mm. years ago, a hundred thousand years ago? Mm. What, what happens? What shifts? So, so kind of opening up to this fact that a human lifespan is a very short, very brief 
moment in time. Mm -hmm. What am I doing with that? Am I influencing mm -hmm. the long arc that's like ongoing? Yeah. And how am I influencing it? Can I mm. influence it? Somebody wrote, I am, somebody wrote, I'm completely not interested in anything to do with saving the world or saving the climate or thinking about the environment or anything. I just don't mm. give a shit. And I was like, mm. oh, wow. Mm. How fascinating. How fascinating. <laughs> it's like, wow. It's like, I don't even care about my great, 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 great grandkids because that's too abstract. I can look at me and, you know, those near and dear around me. But I don't go further than that. I went, oh, mm. that's so interesting. What? What brings you to that place? Because I'm, I'm not that. Yes, I care about those near and dear, but I have the, the thoughts about what is the mark I'm making and, and mm -hmm. what's the imprint? Is it a positive one or is it a negative one? Is it, you know, what am I doing and how can I influence what I can influence and what can I influence? Uh, but he was just like, no. Nah. It's like, wow. Mm. Mm. And I'm always, uh, you know, you raise a great point. Does anyone think about 10, 20 years? One of the things I'm really always interested is in family businesses that have been around for generations. And you made me think, like, does the one who starts it, the, the woman or the man or the founder, do they think like I've heard people say, yeah, I want to have a business for my kids or even my grandkids. But it kind of just stops there. Like I want to have a business for my kids, and my grandkids. And we've seen businesses that have been around uh, 30 years. But the, the great. The great uh, thinking now is like, man, what about the businesses that have been around even longer? And there are some out there. I've read about some. And, you know, did they ever think about that? Like, yeah, I want to start a business that lasts. 80 years within my family. And so that's always been something I've always been curious about. Like those generational businesses, like, yeah, this is, this is my grandfather's business or my great grandfather's. But like you said, we we always think short term, like yeah. think about how many people want to be entrepreneurs and talk about being entrepreneurs. How many of them really say, I, I want to start this business. And one of the reasons why, because I want to give it to my children or I want to give it to my grandchildren a lot of it is just like me, myself, now versus, you know, I can have influence, as you said, on the long arc of things. You know, I won't be yeah. here 200 years from now, but the business can yeah. still be here. Yeah. And that's that's fascinating. When you think about Walmart or, uh, you know, Disney, they're not family businesses. I mean, there are Waltons still alive. I don't know how much they're really involved in a day to day. They probably just sit on the board and stuff. But I mean, those are businesses that have been around for you know hundred plus years, and it's mm. like, man, it's, and they've had a, a impact on <laughs> on the long arc of how we do retail and you know amusement yeah. parks and things of yeah. that nature. Yeah. So always some, interesting. Some to may me. be positive and some yeah. negative. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. I think do they have Walmart in Sweden. No, we don't have Walmart oh, okay. in Sweden. But, okay. And we don't have we don't have Disneyland or Disney World or anything like that either. There you have a, IKEA though, right? IKEA comes from Sweden. Okay, yeah, and that's a huge. Uh, yeah, I, I want to yeah. say the family's still involved in some way in IKEA too. The family too, right? is still involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's there a beautiful are. story as well. <laughs> um, and so IKEA, Volvo, and Saab, but neither of those are Swedish owned anymore. And, and Ikea isn't either. It's run by a Dutch foundation, I think, uh, mm. even though the family is involved, but it's not. Um, and, well, you know, we have some, we have some industrial companies that, that are big and have been big. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the, the longest company the oldest company i actually don't know if they made it through covid or not i think oh, i read wow. somewhere that maybe they died 
I think that was a thousand year old Japanese company. Oh, uh, I I read I saw that, that too. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. saw that article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that was go, that was Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that was That's insane. a long time. That's a really long time. Mhm. Um And it's like yeah. I started when I started my company in 2007, I I didn't consider it for my kids. But I had the the naive idea that I would build up this consultancy firm, you know, start with me and then get somebody else and hire them out, etc. But I mm -hmm. quite quickly realized that, no, I'm very much not interested in that at all. I don't mm -hmm. want to be responsible to, to sell other people. You know, it's enough to mm -hmm. sell me. Um, <laughs> so I... I I gave that idea up quite quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think, you know, my company is me. Very much so. It is me, what mm -hmm. I do. So without me, there's not much. But I'm also kind of building it in such a way. It's, it's not a bad idea in Sweden, at least, to have uh, a limited company and at Aktiebolag. Um, for various reasons. So possibly when I die, my kids, there will be uh, a reason for them to, to hang on to the company. Uh, even though maybe they don't really do anything with it. If I've kind of built mm. worth into the company, financial assets or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't have any kind of drive for that. But at the same time, Tankisbjan is doing something that I don't know what that will be. And mm -hmm. it is definitely my hope that the the concept itself will be around. Um that it, it will continue to become a word, uh, a concept that is known and you know Organic spread. Mm -hmm. um, that would be that would be a good legacy to leave. Thank you, Spian. Yeah, and words can last forever. Words can last forever, for sure. Yeah. How is your blogging going? Oh, it's going good. I'm. I'm. You know, it's always a challenge every day to to do it every day. <laughs> you know, there's always that resistance that Stephen Pressfield speaks about, but I, I did do a post yesterday and um, looking forward to doing one today and, you know, every day after that, but it's, it's going good. Um, I've had people reach out and say, oh, you know, amazing storytelling or, you know, have some conversations mm -hmm. around giving and experiences and things of that nature. So it's going good. Just have to keep at it, keep writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a good thing. I was, when well, you were talking about the Akimbo, I heard mm -hmm. that Akimbo Workshops will put on a kind of a last show uh, mm -hmm. of, of all of the, at least the, 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 the workshops that I know of. Mm -hmm. I don't know, the Creatives Workshop and the Marketing Seminar and the podcast um, mm -hmm. and whatever they are for a last time. And then they will just stay with the alt MBA. Mm -hmm. And I have lots of thoughts around that. <laughs> I have lots of thoughts around that. Um, and, and one of my thoughts, and again, I don't, you know, I'm not, in connection with anybody within Akimbo, the, the company. Mm -hmm. So, but it's as if when Seth Godin walk, kind of like, okay, now I'm separating myself out. He went poof, which is what he does, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> because now he's done this thing and it's, it's up and running. So bye, I'm leaving. I wonder how how they 
how they managed the culture that is so set and how they mm -hmm. didn't manage the culture that is so set. Mm -hmm. How a year ago when they said, we're going to drop forward link, which for people who are listening is this, or was this alumni discourse forum for, for everybody who'd taken um, an Akimbo workshop could go there. Uh, when they announced that they were dropping that, it was like, that's a really weird step. And it made me wonder about connection. It's like when you and I, in one of our first conversations, when I told you about the creative community that I'm in and how that is a direct result of the creative workshop, mm -hmm. you said, oh, wow. I, you know, what a story. I wonder if Seth or the Akimbos have heard, you know, the impact that one of their workshops has or can have. And I wonder at, I wonder at that. I wonder if, because if I'm, if I'm cynical, I'm going, the alt MBA is where they can make a shitload of money. And they're just not interested in the rest anymore because it takes too much effort. Even though I actually think it's the other stuff that's really interesting for me. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that that's true. Um, but it feels and by the way it it feels like there's it's stunted. It's like okay, no, we're taking away these things that were these awesome things it's like we'll just focus on the alt mba it's like okay yeah so <laughs> that's that's a little bit of my thoughts about it but i'm curious about what <laughs> would you think because you have been involved in both the alt mba that is surviving mm -hmm. and uh story skills i mean story mm -hmm. skills come on we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for story skills you and mm, i met exactly. there yeah. So many uh mixed emotions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so story skills, uh like you said, all the workshops I've ever taken were great and life-changing. Story skills, yeah. the marketing seminar, yeah. uh freelancers and the all MBA. And just like you, I often wonder like I'll see, I'll speak to someone, you know, as a coach and, 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 you know, a student who's had an amazing experience. And I'm like, man, I, I actually, I even emailed Seth one day and I, and I, and I asked him like, did you ever think like this would be this? Yeah. Because it's fascinating to me that, um, and by the way, that's like another topic that Seth is the kind of person that like starts things. And then like, all right, I got, like he, he, he actually one time cool. said on the call, he said, I'm the kind of guy that starts a business, turn it into a B Corp, and then I give it away. Like, and it's it it's actually pretty cool. And it kind of talks to the thing we were talking about earlier about curiosity and interest, how you don't have to do one thing. You could do it. Like, all right, great. I was interested in that. Now I'm, yeah. I'm doing the uh, carbon almanac. Like this is what yeah. this is my whole yeah. focus right now. Yeah. And maybe in five years it'll be something totally different. Who knows? And so I, I love him for that. But I emailed him once and I said, man, Seth, did you ever think it could be this? Because I've heard like some stories of totally changed people. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about marketing. I'm talking about life. life. <laughs> you know? Yeah, 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 for sure. And Yeah. And I I don't want to speak for him. Um, I forgot what his, what his reply was now, but I could imagine he hears stories all the time. Uh, just from his email, you know, he has one of the best blogs in the world. I'm sure bloggers, you know, podcasts, he gets the feedback. But it's it's always fascinating to me when I hear it's like, wow, this, you know, here's this guy that started, you know, the MBA and then the marketing seminar. And you think business and you think, you know, leadership, you know, which is his big thing. But I mean, there's been some incre <laughs> incredible things that have happened all across the board. Like you said, story skills and I mean, even the story you told earlier with your cat is like, you know, that's a story skills story right there. Like, you know, that's that's yeah. a powerful story. And like you said, we wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be doing the things that I'm doing. And so one of the, the ways I've tried to look at it positively is um, 
One is this last session. I'm going to try to do. <laughs> I'm going to try to peek my head in as many workshops as I can. Really? But the other thing You're is going in yeah. all. <laughs> No, 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 no. I've taken, so I've taken, I've taken the majority of them, but, um, I'm definitely going to sign up for podcasting and not because I want to have a podcast, but because I think I can learn something about communication and asking questions, which I'm really interested in. So I'm, I'm going to do that one for sure. Um, and I thought about peeking my head in creatives only because it's for six months. Yeah, so even if I get off. One. Yeah, even if I get up to a slow start, I could catch up. And I also am curious if, because it's been announced as the last one, will it be an influx? Like, everyone's like, whew, and it'd be a bigger community, which it could be like a big party and could be something special. Um, But I've yeah. thought about it. No, you go oh, no. on. I'll, I'll <laughs> put it up in memory and I'll revert to it. Yeah, but I've just thought about it in a way that now that all these workshops are going away, you really have to do the work now because it's like you can't just keep taking a bunch of courses because now there's no more. I mean, there's a million courses out there. Are any of them like Akimbo? I don't know. I've taken a few. It doesn't seem like it. I might find one. But now you have more time to do the actual work. So that's one thing I've been telling myself, which is great. But for sure, I'm going to miss all the communities and the students and the other coaches and everything for sure because mm -hmm. it's it's magic. <laughs> Yeah. One of my things that I'm I'm questioning that I that makes me wonder about this is the lack of communication. Cuz I've taken the uh, I've taken the creatives workshop, I've taken the story skills and I was active in forward link. Like I was active. I haven't gotten that I know an email saying, "Hey, this is the last time we're doing these workshops. Sign up. Mm. I haven't I haven't gotten emails in the spring either when they started something in January, February, or whatever it was. You know, it's like I haven't I haven't so it's like why not? You have to have a list of thirty thousand people. Aren't you emailing mm -hmm. us all saying, Hey, last shot. You want it? This is now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that. Maybe it's fallen into my spam folders, but I don't think so. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, so I know that it's the last workshops because mm -hmm. of people, because I've taken a Kimbo and somebody knows somebody else who's a coach. And so, mm -hmm. you know, but, but it's word of mouth. It's not from a Kimbo. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, why aren't you talking to us? Yeah. Well, there is a, there is, a, like you said, it, it could be in your spam folder. There is an email. I have no clue um, why you didn't get it, of course. Um, but I can definitely mention it like, hey, you know, I, how could we better get to all the students that have taken a course yeah. ever before? Because, yeah. um, yeah. I mean, I think that was one of the things that Forward Link was great for, you mm -hmm. know, because they mentioned it there. And I was there, so that was a a, a good pickup place for new new signups. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because a repeat customer is much much cheaper in many ways than than a new customer. How do I find new people? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's much harder than to actually keep the people. And it's like you say, there's a lot of people who have turned into a Kimbo workshop addicts. We're just taking workshop <laughs> after workshop after workshop because it's great. And I think it is the sense of community that is fostered. Mm -hmm. But ever since they shut down Forward Link, there's, there's something about that that just doesn't really, it doesn't sit right with me. I, I wonder mm -hmm. about that. Um, um, the good news is Seth did uh, one of his blog posts. He did uh, mention it, that it is the last one. As you know, he's a teacher of majority of them. Um, yeah. So he did mention, so I'm sure a great amount of people saw that one as well. Like, oh, wait, this yeah. is the last one. But yeah, um, it's unfortunate that you or probably others didn't see the email, whether it's in their spam or whether, you know, it got lost in the list or whatever it is. But yeah. I'm hoping that before it's too late, I mean, it starts September exactly a month away, exactly. 
I'm hoping that everyone September that 19th? has ever yeah, that's the launch of of all the workshops. Yeah, so mm-hmm. a month away. But I'm hoping that everyone that's ever taken a workshop <laughs> and at least knows about it, whether they decide they want to sign up or not, I'm hoping they know about it. And then, of course, all the people that have never taken one and have always said, one day I'm going to take one. They see that, listen, this is your last yeah. time to take one. Yeah. Yeah. And so at I'm looking forward to Because I, did I understand it correctly that like they're giving it back to the people who, so I mean, is Bernadette getting the story skills so that she could run it, host it in the future if you wanted to? Yeah, exactly. All the, all the uh, teachers are now going to own their workshop yeah. and not, not in collaboration with Akimbo. And they could run it as many times, you know, they could mm-hmm. run it whenever they want, however they want. And so that's another thing. Hey, you know, what's going to yeah. happen, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it could be the last one with Akimbo, maybe not the last one overall, who knows. But it's something about the Akimbo community that's unique. So it'll be interesting to see. But but that's the thing, though. There is something about the Akimbo community that is unique. But as a member of the Akimbo community, I cannot reach out to the Akimbo community. I don't. I don't have uh, a place to go. Or for his life. There is no there is no home. There is no mm. flag that I can go to and find others who have also taken. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's, so that's it's like point. so it's 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 an interesting thing that they're so great at building community in the cohorts, in the at least I would from what I heard from a friend who took the alt MBA, it's like that one is so stressed, kind of, it's so jam-packed much. So she didn't get a good community sense out of that one, actually. Mm. But the creatives workshops, like you say, it's four and a half months and then it's open for another one and a half mm-hmm. month. So there's plenty of time to like really find your people within the cohort. Mm-hmm. True, um, true. But... Once it's done, where do I find the other ones? If I didn't get their emails when I did it, if you know, how do I find someone from the story skills workshop if I didn't catch them then? I can't yeah. anymore. Yeah, I can Google them, but you know, like, <laughs> then it's not a community, right? It's like it's then one on one. It's yeah, precisely. So mm-hmm. that's one of the things that that's the thing that like oh it chafes within me there's something there that i wonder about mm-hmm. um. yeah um i think it'll be interesting to see if there's an emphasis put this time on really connecting with people that you connect with like let me get your phone number and your linkedin and your facebook because there's no like you said there'll be no more place to meet like oh i'll see you in a few like there have literally, literally been many students that I've seen in multiple workshops. Like, oh look, it's you again. And it's like yeah. constantly you bump into somebody. Oh yeah, I'm taking yeah. this one too. Yeah. But and that'll be no more. So, I, and I also wonder if there's going to be a student that just says, "Hey, you know what? I'm going to create something." Yeah. Which of course would be something Seth would love because he loves when people just say, "I'm going to do it." You yeah. know. So, like, I'm going to create something that we all can come together in. Um, I know in Alt MBA there have been students that have said, "Hey, I'm going to create a Slack if you want to stay connected." You know, everyone join the Slack channel, and you know, there's obviously LinkedIn and Facebook, and I mean, there's there's ways to do it. But like you said, Forward Link was the it was like the official. You know, here's the flag. Everyone meet here, yeah. and you'll find out news. And even if you don't read everything or see anything, you know, you can go there to get something. So. And that's the thing that's lacking since they shut Forward Link down. There's no mm-hmm. place anymore for me to go. Yeah, yeah. It'll be it'll be interesting to see. I tell you, it's a it's a bittersweet moment for me for sure. I think about it all the time. Like wow. But I, one thing I do say, I'm I'm grateful I got in when I did because imagine I never experienced a Kimbo. It, like if like if if it was a thing that we talked about in the past and I never got like if only you went like oh Mandel you should have been here two years ago there was this yeah. thing at Kimbo yeah. you should have yeah. you should have took a class you you would be perfect for the story skills and I'd be yeah. like what was yeah. this thing so I'm I'm glad I can say you know 
I did story skills. I did TMS. I did OMBA. I did freelancers. And, you know, God willing, I'll do podcasting and maybe creatives and even. even I would say can- creatives. I would say creatives without <laughs> a doubt. Of, of course, you, know you would what, have that why bias. The beauty, yeah, but do you know what the beauty of the creative workshop is that it is creative? It is not mm-hmm. writing in community, which is just writing. It is not podcasting, which is just podcasting. It is not mm-hmm. marketing seminar, which focuses on marketing. The creatives workshop was, you know, there's photographers and singers mm-hmm. and 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 piano players and writers and bloggers and rappers and artists and painters and 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 people who you know worked in center for disease control and you know it's like the range of that made it and the fact that the dailies that you're supposed to start there where you every day on your own thread write something or post something share share something is rather the proper word Mm -hmm. the variety of that it's like a a grand tapas layout spread you know there's everything you ever thought of you could try is there Mm -hmm. and you could go there and connect with somebody and ask them how can you make this photograph this (laughs) way or how do you or what you know it's like so the variety of that at least for someone like me, that was probably the the one of the absolute gems of the creative workshop because it wasn't all text based or all podcast sound based or all you know it was it was such a like grand spread of just everything that you could think of in the world. Yeah. And uh, you've you've kind of just sold me on it. <laughs> no, but one of the things that I, I do love about what you just said is that I'm the kind of person that likes to steal from different places. So I like to connect. So, if, you know, if I'm a writer about sneakers or I work in a sneaker industry and then I see something in the painting industry, I'm like, hmm, how would that look in the sneaker industry? Like, I, I like to connect ideas like that. And so having having that will be great. Although there there is a taste of that in almost all the workshops, probably not like creatives, though. I can see how creatives can be unique. But even in like the marketing seminar where it's all about marketing, everyone mostly has a, a different business or a different thing they're marketing. Yeah. Some people yeah. are like, oh, I want to market a book. I want to market this. But I could see with the how creatives can be unique in that every day you have to put up something. So that every yeah. day it's almost a new idea that you're presenting versus yeah. this is the same business I'm going to work on through the 60 lessons of the marketing seminar. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me, I've gone back and forth trying to think like, all right, what workshop am I going to take? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, even bootstrappers, which isn't even available anymore. I was interested in bootstrappers. I've heard amazing things about the bootstrapping yeah. workshop. So, um. So they are they interest. they are doing the marketing seminar at the creative workshop, the podcasting, um, writing and community story, writing skills, community story skills, and the copyright shop and a copy workshop. The copy workshop, which I also took and which was also incredibly amazing. And uh, mm-hmm. the teacher Margot Aaron, she's a fascinating person. <laughs> she's like her energy is so infectious, and I read her. Um, her newsletter and her blog, and uh, she's an amazing teacher. Um, but yeah, last last hurrah. <laughs> the last hurrah. Yeah. So for <sighs> anybody who's listening, because uh, this will drop at the at the end of August, so mm. there's still three Don't... weeks to go check it out. Uh, yeah, and I'm exactly. a definitely rooting for the creative workshop and story (laughs) skills that I also took. But the creative workshop, I have to say, was, it was such an experience. 
And mm. not for me for the dailies, because I had blog daily, you know, I had blog daily for years by that time. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't the daily thing that was the thing for me. For me, it was, like I said, this, the variety of everything mm -hmm. that was there was just, yeah. man, I love that. Mm -hmm. Because like you say, I mean, I read 10 books at a time, kind of. Because it gives me the same thing. You know, there's a cross-pollination mm. that happens. And I am yeah. a bumblebee, then I love bumblebeeing. You know, mm -hmm. you pick up a little bit here, you drop off a little bit there. And and um, so it is, it is a fantastic, fantastic experience. Yeah. Have you read the practice? Yeah. Oh, you did? Did you read it at the same time you were taking a workshop? No. Because the practice oh, okay. is written based on the workshop I took. So yeah. you find me in the cover on the, you could, you know, on the, in the book. Uh, oh, you're in the you book? Look at, oh, yeah. It's, you'll find my little profile picture in there. Oh, Cause beautiful. Because that, that, was, that was the cohort that he used to write the book from. Wow. So no I was one? in the original, the first public. They had run it, like, internally a trial run and then uh -huh. I was in the first so I'm I'm an original pro one. Oh wow yeah, see yeah, now you, yeah. you now when we hang up I'm going to go downstairs and, and open the I have the book I haven't read it yet but yeah. wow I did not know that uh you have yeah. a you have a definite story that we talked about stories I mean we talked about things lasting hundreds of years you can tell that story forever even after Kimbo yeah. workshops are gone you were a part of the yeah. The cohort yeah. that he wrote the book off of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, I was. And this is another thing. Maybe I told you this. I'm going to share with you Allison's little movie about generosity that she made about me. Allison Coates, oh, wow. who was also in the creative workshop. Who and is Story one of my with us. And Story Skills with us. And she's mm -hmm. one of my dearest friends. And she was in season one of my pod. Mm -hmm. Um, when, when it was approaching the end of Pro One, which is the, the, the designated kind of acronym for the creative workshop for those who are mm -hmm. not akimbo literate, um, the old way that you could find your own stuff was you could download, uh, an Excel spreadsheet basically with everything or you could find you could log on and you could find your own posts your own thread but nothing else and we were saying but no you have to you know you have to have at least everybody else's stuff in my thread because the connection that were made especially in the creative workshop was just golden he's like ah no you can't I have to have that. I was like, no, you can't have that. And, you know, it's not this, that, and the other thing. And she made a... Alison rooted for this to happen uh, and found... Um, she'd done a, a time and attention piece with me, which is her thing. She She meets people and she films them. When you're... You're given time and attention from her. And whatever wants to come up, comes up. And, and I was one of the first ones that she tried to do that online with. And I spoke about generosity, amongst other things. And she'd made one movie, uh, one little three-minute movie from that hour with me. And then, for some reason, she went back to that material. And towards the end of the creative workshop, she made one more with me on generosity and she she sent that one to Seth and he was like wow mm. so that was at least one of the things that made a Kimbo shift and say okay you're actually gonna get not just your own stuff but everybody else's comments in your daily thread at least i think that's what it was mm. because that was the generous thing to do 
because it was that generosity of the connections made, of the comments made, of the, the love, the appreciation, the questioning, the curiosity, the ponderings, you know, that was what made it so rich. Um, so I'll send you that little, I'll send you that video. Yeah, uh, definitely. It's a lovely little video on generosity. And, and you, you can now know that I'm speaking about, I'm speaking about the creative workshop. Um, basically when I'm, when I'm, when I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's. Yeah, it's a little bit bittersweet. I haven't taken a, a Kimba workshop since we did the story skills, and that is mm. almost two years ago, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Has yeah. Allison taken any more, or she stopped that story skills as well? She took Alt MBA. She oh, was she in, in a cohort 50. The, oh, wow, the big one. The big <laughs> one. Yeah. The big 50. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're hitting the big ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't think she's, she took the marketing seminar before the, the creative workshop. I know that too. Okay. Okay. So she has a few under her belt. Yeah. Like mm. most people. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Very few people yeah. just like, oh, I just yeah. did one and I left. Yeah. 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 Except if it's not for you, which is fine. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. But then maybe you won't even do it. You'll sign up and then you'll just drop off. Mm, yeah. But most um, people that finish and enjoyed it, they'll come back and say, I'm going to do another one. Yeah. 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 That community. Yeah. That's a good one. Well, maybe that's a good place to, to end with a little nudge for people to go check out the, the last possibility to sign up for an Akimbo workshop. Because yeah. I do recommend it if you're, if you're curious about any of these things, about marketing mm -hmm. or about writing or about or about creativity uh, or podcasting or whatever. Um, any idea why they call it pro? Is it like professional as in creators are professionals and they ship every day? I think that's why it is. I don't, I don't know. Maybe mm. because TCW doesn't have a good ring to it you know um, yeah interesting even but, though i've seen that acronym before <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I, i've used that as well but it's yeah. not the official one but i think i mean one of the prompts in it is about hack amateur and professional so there's a lot of talk mm -hmm. about that in the in the prompts that are yeah. there yeah for sure yeah steven steven pressfield talks about that a lot yeah. in his uh yeah. his book Go actually he has a book called gopro <laughs> yeah. and uh his latest book steven pressfield uh put your ass where your heart wants to be he <laughs> he gives uh, a lot of praise to seth i yeah. I, I didn't know him and seth had such a great relationship but oh uh, yeah they are i think they go yeah. back a long time yeah exactly and yeah. so uh yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I will let you know when we will set up our fifth and final conversation. Can you imagine that it's already been? Yeah. We're almost at the end, but there will also be the bonus of everyone getting together if we can get everyone together. Otherwise, it'll be two people and three people um, mm -hmm. for a final. Uh, kind of more of reflective um, get together with everybody from the season. So yeah, I would love that. There will be two at least, uh, and those mm -hmm. conversations so far have also been fantastic. Um, yeah, count me in. Well, good. So I wish you a lovely day. Hope you yes. make it into a great one. Put your ass Likewise. where your heart wants to be. That was a good, that was a good <laughs> one. Yes, and uh, I have to get to Sweden soon. I have to meet Pop. You are so welcome. And I'll <laughs> make sure that I'm sure I could hustle up a cooking class somehow. Actually, oh, yeah. there is a friend of mine who does Swedish hospitality. Uh, mm. where you can get to i'm i i think you would love her uh, maria yeah. Klitte. Yeah. 
I will send either you this year or next year. year. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna start looking at flights and stuff of that nature. Good, good. That would be just so awesome. You have yeah, to come definitely. here. Yeah, we got to continue yeah. the community. <laughs> precisely, precisely. Oh, I look forward to that. So, Absolutely. You make a great day, my friend. Enjoy the rest of your day. I will. And if you haven't checked out the Akimbo workshops, but you're kind of interested in the type of people who join, which, as you understood, also includes people like me and Mandel, go check out the Tankispian Patreon um, that you can find on patreon.com slash Tankispian or in the show notes. Because every month I invite you as patrons to a 90-minute Zoom meeting where we talk about interesting things about... We've talked about celebrations and we've talked about uh, procrastination and we've talked about rituals and we've talked about gifts. And we, yeah. Invitation. We've talked about loads of stuff. And the conversations are always really, really mm. rich, They're respectful, rich, and just filled with Tankispia. And they are not recorded. I doodle, but they're not recorded, so you actually have to be there. So they're ephemeral as well, which just so happens to be one of the topics that we've also talked about. So go check it out at patreon.com slash and I hope to see you there.